वेलकम बैक वी आर नाउ एट एन इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट इन दिस सीरीज ऑन बेजियन रिग्रेशन एंड इन्फ्रेंस सो फार वी हैव गॉन ओवर हाउ टू क्रिएट बेजियन मॉडल्स एंड हैव डिस्कस्ड फ्यू एल्गोरिथम्स फॉर फाइंडिंग द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ दिस मॉडल्स नाउ बिफोर वी स्टार्ट टू डिस्कस मोर एडवांस्ड मॉडलिंग टेक्निक्स एंड द इन्फ्रेंस एल्गोरिथम्स इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू गेट फैमिलियर विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्रोबेबलिस्टिक प्रोग्रामिंग and also the various options that exist in open source to help us do it so here is the model that we have discussed so far in the previous tutorials that is the joint distribution of unknown random variables t and w using an example from dr bishop's book in the previous tutorials i also showed you how to represent this model using a graph and also its mathematical representation this essentially is a very simple bayesian probabilistic modeling model where the mean for a sample is determined using a linear model and the parameters are the random variables now when we say probabilistic programming it is about specifying the mathematical model using a programming language but there are some key differences from the way you generally use a programming language for your typical software application unlike traditional software applications variables in this context have associated distributions that is we are dealing with random variables these random variables are also connected with each other and require operations on them and more importantly once we have specified the model using the language constructs and apis we want to perform two important operations the first operation is to find the posterior distribution of unknown variables and the second operation is to perform sampling from the model also we intend to do both of these operations in such a way that the model specification remains unchanged in other words we want to try many different algorithms while keeping the model same so based on what i have told you so far one natural conclusion is that of course we need a programming language and a library of algorithms but at the same time given the fact that we have random variables involved and we have this desire to keep the model specification agnostic to the inference algorithms should we think about having a dedicated or a specially designed programming language in the space of probabilistic programming one term that is often used is called ppl which stands for probabilistic programming language but before i go any further with this term that is ppl i want to first quickly clarify the differences between programming language and a framework i'm sure i don't need to explain you what a programming language is you also understand what a library is a library is simply a collection of functions that said i have noticed that even seasoned software engineers sometimes have a difficulty understanding the notion of frameworks essentially a framework guides and even controls how you specify your intent or your logic in all the respective domains whether we are talking about web application development server side code or desktop or mobile applications most of the time we end up using established patterns and practices and a framework helps you specify your intent using these well defined patterns so that you get the benefit of writing code more effectively and efficiently a framework also takes care of repeated but required tasks for you as an example consider writing a server application and if you are using a framework like flask or django or express js you most of the time just specify the function that should be called when the user goes to a specific url or a specific endpoint you typically you do not worry about how the server app received the http request and more importantly how the underlying framework routed it and or even generated the html to be returned to the browser a good framework also always offers extensibility points so that you can implement new features and or even overload existing behaviors most of the time for a framework to do its job it uses advanced language features like introspection or reflection and it even can do runtime code generation since a framework sort of controls and guides how you write your application it is bound to be opinionated 
Opinionated here means that the framework's design is influenced by the experience and thinking of its creators. And since there are many ways to do the same thing, there is always an element of subjectiveness. Also many frameworks come bundled with libraries and some do not. And now the reason I'm explaining this is because to specify your probabilistic program, you mostly need a framework that can do the heavy lifting for you to keep the specification of the model same, uh, whether you are sampling from it or finding the parameters using different algorithms. Unfortunately, the scientific community that works on Bayesian probabilistic modeling likes to call these frameworks PPLs or probabilistic programming languages. Maybe there is some historical reasoning behind it that I'm not aware of. And, and, but I also think that this nomenclature or this term is not going to go away or change. But at least now you're aware of it. As such, out of all the toolkits that I'm going to review today, only one of them can be put in the category of a language and it is STAN. Rest are really frameworks written in different modern high level languages like Python and Julia. Now my intention here is to give you an idea of how a Bayesian model is specified using these various frameworks or PPLs. Clearly, I cannot explain all the details of these frameworks in one tutorial, but I'm hoping that by the end of the tutorial, you would have a decent idea of which one may be suitable for you. I would also provide some recommendations to assist you in making the choices. And to do this, uh, exercise, I have selected a data set collected by Dr. Howell. It is a data set of demographic data from Kalahari Kung Sun Sen people. Uh, you can see that there are four fields, height, weight, age and gender. And for our exercise, we will pick only entries for adults. That is where the age entries are greater than or equal to 18. The model for this data set is taken from statistical rethinking a book on probabilistic uh, modeling, Bayesian probabilistic modeling by Dr. Richard McLeod. Now, I have recommended this book in the answers to comments on various other tutorials on my channel, as this is one of the best book you will read on this topic. Personally, for me, this book was instrumental in understanding this field. And to this date, it remains the best book that I have read on this subject. It's a brilliant book by an extraordinary teacher. And this is how the model looks like, the mathematical representation. We intend to build a model for the height here. And here we say that the height is a normal or a Gaussian random variable. So height is also our target random variable. The mean of the random variable is a linear model where the predictor variable is the weight. Here we will be using the standardized version of the weight predictor. Since we are doing Bayesian modeling, we would treat our unknown parameters as random variables. That is the alpha, beta, and sigma that you see here in these equations, they will be treated as random variables. Therefore, we will specify the prior on them. Prior on alpha is normally distributed with mean of 178 and standard deviation of 20. And prior on beta is a log normal with mean of zero and one. The standard deviation of height is also a random variable, which is uniformly distributed. Again, we are doing Bayesian modeling. So the important thing to remember is that we will treat all our unknown variables as random variables. And if you have been following the tutorials in this series, by now this should all make sense. If not, then check out the previous tutorials in this series. As such, this model is very similar to one, one, the one on curve fitting example on synthetic data from the book by Dr. Bishop. And now we will see how this model is specified using various frameworks, sorry, PPLs. The first one is Stan. It is named after Stan Ulam. And in many ways, this is the only one which can be really classified as a language. Here is the workflow in Stan. You specify your model in a text file. You can use an extension .stan, but it's a text file. And we will go over the syntax in a minute. You then use a compiler that takes this text file and generates the C++ code. As such, when you convert from one language to another, the correct term is transpiler and not compiler. 
and now we pass this generated C++ header file to the build system and generate the executable. The core of Stan is written using C++, but there are bindings available in many programming languages. The project is open source and has a strong influence from academia, both in terms of its roadmap and the code contribution. The project came into existence around 20, 2011 and it remains the leading framework of choice. The people behind it are also the pioneers in the field of Bayesian statistics. They are the inventors of various modeling techniques, diagnostic techniques and the inference algorithms. And the one aspect that I cherish the most are the case studies by Stan community. You learn a lot by reading those case studies and overall the documentation is very good as well. And now let's see how you write the model using the syntax of Stan language. The content of the file is divided into various sections. The first section here is the data section. You can see that here we have specified our data variables and the types for them. That is whether they are real or integer and also whether they are vector, vector variables or not. The syntax allows you to put some constraint on the values also. For example, here it is specifying that the value of n should be at least 1. The next section is for the definition of parameters and the constraint on the parameters. Again, you can see that the sigma should be between 0 and 50 and the, the value of b should be 0 or more. And on alpha, there is no constraint here. And finally, the model section in which you specify the structure of your model. You can see that it looks very similar to our mathematical representation. Now, instead of running the workflow on a command line, I will be using the Python binding to stand. So I will first put this content that you have seen so far in a Python variable, which I am calling stand program. Here is a snippet showing that I have read the Howell dataset using pandas and have stored the average weight in a variable x underscore bar. Next, we need a dictionary whose keys should correspond to the entries in the data section of the stand program. You can see here there is a one to one correspondence. Finally, we will be using the build API to pass both the stand program and the stand data. The, the API invokes the stand transpiler behind the scenes and returns the, the Python object, which is stand underscore model. For me in Google Colab, it took about 33 seconds to compile the stand program. And now finally using the API called sample on this model object, we can run the inference algorithm. By default, Stan will use the MCMC algorithms. It will also determine some tuning parameters. Here, we are only suggesting it to simulate four Markov chains and the samples per chain should be 1000. Behind the scene, Stan's inference algorithm run on multiple threads and do the runtime adaptations. We will discuss these sort of things in the next few tutorials. For now, just treat this as a black box. For this model, sampling the procedure distribution of various unknown parameters took only few seconds, I think around four seconds. And all the information is stored in the sampled underscore posterior Python object. So the next thing to worry about is how we should analyze and plot the posterior distribution of various unknown parameters that are stored in this sampled underscore posterior Python object. For that, I will use another library that is specially designed or made for this kind of exploratory analysis. This library is called Arviz and it provides plethora of tools to do these kind of things. The library has an adapter or a plugin that can take the sampled posterior from Stan and converts it to the format or a structure that it requires. You can see it here. I am using from underscore PyStan API of Arviz to convert the object from PyStand to that of Arvis. Now we can use the summary API to see the table that provides the details on the unknown parameters that is alpha, beta and sigma. And you can see that the mean and standard deviation of the posterior samples and also various other metrics. 
one important metric here is r hat and the value of one indicates that the four markov chains that we asked it to simulate have mixed properly which is a good indication that we are most likely correctly approximating the distribution of our unknown parameters now it is also a good idea to have a plot of the same information that i have shown you so far Arways also provides that support and since it builds on top of matplotlib you can do some customizations as well and here are the plots it has the same information as the table that we created using the summary api but quite often plots are helpful to get a better understanding one last plot i want to show is that of the chains here on the left side are the approximated distribution of alpha beta and sigma there are four curves in each plot uh, since they are very similar and they are very overlapping it's very difficult to see that there are indeed four of them and this this is also a good indication that the four markov chains have converged to the same target distributions and on the right are the plot for samples the y axis in these plots are for the values of the parameters and x axis are the sample numbers so this is how you write uh, your bayesian probabilistic model using stan and more specifically this is how you use pi stan binding and then use arways to investigate the sampled posterior data the second framework is pi y mc3 here we use python language to specify our model uh, this means we get to use the control flow constructs of the python language as well behind the scene pymc3 uses the computational graph library called theano and have backends to generate highly performant code recently it has made great strides towards both performance improvements and the capability to target different backends such as jax and numba pymc3 in my opinion gets the deserved credit to introduce this field to data scientists and also it has built a great thriving community the framework not only have implementation of mcmc algorithms but also has a decent implementation of variational inference algorithms so let's see how we write our model using pi y mc3 framework here we start by creating a python context and here is how the various statements that correspond to our mathematical mathematical model would look like as you can see it's a very clean idiomatic python code the last line that is the line number 7 is how you sample the posterior distribution for various unknowns pymc3 also figures out the appropriate mcmc algorithm to use and it also performs some runtime adaptation of the algorithm depending on the model here is how the run looks like by default it has used two chains for each parameter now we pass the trace to arways and obtain the summary data from this point onwards usage of arways is same as what we saw in pystan in my opinion pymc3 is a very clean very simple and easy to learn framework and it has been a pioneer in this space as well next framework is tensorflow probability as should be evident from the name it builds on top of tensorflow the famous machine learning toolkit however now it also supports jax as the backend and one of the most innovative aspect of tensorflow probability is the shapes and while it is out of scope for this tutorial to explain this aspect in detail it does play a critical role in giving it advantages when it comes to performance there is a huge collection of distributions that this library or this framework implements and of course thanks to tensorflow and jax foundations the usage of accelerators becomes trivial there is also a support for structured time series and normalizing flows and it also has a very nice integration with neural networks written in keras it also has a nice documentation and a decent number of example notebooks however in my opinion the way the documentation is presently organized or styled or formatted it could use improvements otherwise what i have felt is that for someone who is new to bayesian modeling the stuff could easily look intimidating and so now let's see how we specify our model using tfp 
here are some essential imports and aliases that we will need and this is how you write the model in tfp we see the probabilistic program as a joint distribution this particular tfp model is written using a feature of python language called coroutines and wherever you see the yield statement it corresponds to the distribution in our mathematical formulation of the model that said while shapes is what enables you to achieve parallelization and usage of accelerators this aspect can also be tad bit difficult to handle now uh, tfp also provides two more ways to specify the model and they call them joint distribution sequential and joint distribution named and unfortunately i am not a fan of these variants i think they are not user friendly at all not to mention that having many ways of doing the same thing is not always a good idea so a bit of a strong opinion of mine on this aspect here uh, but if you want to discuss more you can ask questions on this in the comments why i think so and or express your view on this aspect if you are familiar with tfp and this is how we build the model object and finally we run the inference algorithm to get the posterior distribution of our unknown parameters now unlike the other toolkits there is no one single api call that is available in tfp at least not not yet but you can always write your own it's not a big deal very much what i have done here and this utility function also returns the result in the format of the data required by arvis and therefore we can now again use the summary api of arvis and display the information about the sampled posterior distributions of our variables the next framework i am going to discuss is an open source initiative from uber ai there are two projects as such one of them is called pyro that uses pytorch as the backend and the other uses jax as the backend numpyro uses jax as the backend the innovative aspect associated with both of these frameworks is the notion of effect handlers and was first described in this paper that led to the creation of an first an experimental ppl that runs in a browser uh, it would be a nice idea to go to this link and read more about it it's really a great work it also has the implementation of lot of distribution and inference algorithms on top of that the best thing about these frameworks both of them numpyro pyro are the various guides and the documentation that uh, this community has written and i think the quality the style of the content is the best amongst all the frameworks again it my opinion ironically i do not use pyro but i have learned a lot from their guides and documentation so i am a huge fan of the people who write these guides truly a remarkable work i will show you the code snippet for numpyro so here are the necessary imports i'll be using the no u turn mcmc algorithm here is how the model definition looks like as you can see that it's very clean code uh, as such the beauty and the strength of numpyro and pyro lies in the effective usage of effect handlers unfortunately it is out of the scope for this tutorial to explain them uh, but i must say that depending on your background the learning curve with pyro could be more than that of pymc3 and tensorflow probability if you truly want to leverage its power and maybe create your own effect handlers and here is how you would instantiate the algorithm for sampling the posterior personally i like this api a lot simple straightforward elegant api for using the inference algorithm and finally there is also an adapter function that is available that can convert the sampled posterior to that of arvis format and then we would use a summary and various other diagnostic functions to analyze the sample posterior as we have done with other frameworks the final framework or the toolkit or the ppl is turing.jl which is written using julia programming language if you do not know julia it's a relatively young programming language whose focus is on performance and one of the thing that julia community quite often highlights is that unlike r and python you do not have to write or migrate the code that requires high performance to c or c++ 
more importantly this language is slowly but steadily building an ecosystem of libraries for statistics and data science here is a clipping from turing.jl repository highlighting the current features that it has and as such julia is uh, in general has a very nice support for writing embedded domain specific languages using a feature they call macros and turing.jl utilizes those that feature to provide a very interesting and intuitive modeling api it also offers the implementation of various algorithms as well both the mcmc algorithms and the variational inference algorithms here is a clipping of the code for the model for our dataset the code snippet is not written by me here but uh, i am providing you the reference to the link and it all the links to the notebook that i have developed and in which you will find the code for various other frameworks in the description of this tutorial notice that the model looks almost identical to the mathematical representation and it was made possible thanks to this nice support of writing custom dsls in julia programming language and here are the results you are familiar with this by now by the way arvez does have a support for julia using the python interoperability support provided by julia language here in this code snippet the author of this snippet has written some custom functions to display the analysis of sampled posterior so it is not using arvez at least not not this uh, code snippet so these were few famous ppls or frameworks to do probabilistic programming and it is natural for you to start wondering about which one to use and the answer to this question is not very straightforward and whatever i would suggest would be a bit biased that said i still want to give you some recommendations to help you a little bit with making a decision let's first see why you may want to use stan if you are a masters or phd student there is a very good chance that your professor or department at your university is heavily invested in stan now using stan would help you have a good teamwork with that with your professor and other other classmates so this is one of the reason you would want to learn stan in my opinion and also if you have a statistics background there is a very good chance that you your programming language of choice is r at present stan and also some frameworks that build on top of stan have a very good support for r and finally most of the famous books on this subject of bayesian statistics and bayesian modeling uh, they do use stan so if you know stan it would be helpful for it would be helpful in understanding the existing literature and my recommendation here is that you anyway learn stan in addition to the final choice that you will make it is anyway a good idea to learn about different frameworks and languages as it broadens your perspective and gives you more choices so in simple words learn stan anyways next are the three python frameworks that is pyro pymc3 and tfp you would want to select one of them if you have a data science background uh, maybe you want to integrate your probabilistic model along with some neural networks and there you would leverage of course some accelerators but in my opinion pymc3 remains the simplest to learn and by the way simplest does not mean that it is less capable at the time of the this tutorial it is the leading framework in python ecosystem and it is quite mature but as i said earlier if you want the integration with some neural networks written in pytorch and tensorflow then maybe you should try pyro and tfp respectively and finally turing.jl is interesting if you are okay migrating to a new language now love for programming languages is very subjective and personal and people form religions and cults around them if you like julia then this may be a good choice turing.jl but i must also warn you that at present julia does not offer a rich non data science ecosystem even though julia is a general purpose programming language at least this is how it is presented it does not yet have the same richness in terms of ecosystem in of software engineering libraries as python has and this brings me to the end of this tutorial 
Now, one of the thing that frustrates me is the duplication of efforts that happen in all domains of computer science and software engineering. Generally, this duplicated effort or efforts happen in the name of innovation. But most of the time, it is only about not invented hair syndrome. But I must say that at least for these frameworks that I have discussed in this tutorial, they have tried to solve the problem from different perspectives and they also cater to different languages and the underlying foundations and frameworks are different. So all of them have my respects and I'm thankful that such a variety exists in open source community. Also, in my opinion, Arways is an excellent example of how a careful separation of features can enable code reuse and avoid duplication. So a huge thanks to the community behind Arways. Also, you will find the link to the Google Colab notebook in which I have the code for various frameworks in the description of this tutorial. And that's it for now. I thank you for the time you spent here today and wish you good luck in your learnings. If you have questions, please feel free to ask them in comments. Bye for now. Goodbye.